Hello, and welcome to the second night of Ashland's inaugural Battle of the Ashland Stars. My name is Christopher Scholl, and I'm the Managing Director at Ashland. Here's how this works. As you watch the following fantastic performances, pre-recorded and edited by the participants, their coaches, and captains, you will be able to vote for one or more of the three teams involved by clicking the links below. Vote early and often. Every dollar counts as a vote to see which team is crowned the 2020 champs. And don't forget to check out our silent auction items, which you can find under auction in the menu of this site. Everything goes to support Ashland as we work on online programming and continue to live our mission of empowering young people during these challenging times. And please join us on this site at 7 p.m. on Saturday for the live stream finale of the Battle of the Ashland Stars, direct from the Ashland stage. Now, enjoy and vote. Hi, I'm Jen Burley Bentz. And I went to school with uh, Rob in Eau Claire. Um, actually, I went to school in Eau Claire, not at the same school as Rob. And so I knew him before Ashland was even a thing. Um, so back in the day, I was in a couple of shows at Ashland, one with Paris. We did Guys and Dolls together. And then um, Barry and I did, Barry, what's the name of it? All Night Strut. All Night Strut. We did All Night Strut together. And then of course, some USO shows that we, um, put together for benefits and all that kind of fun stuff, which was so great. Um, and I can tell you one quick story about my Ashland experience. I have missed a, an entrance on stage two times in my career, twice. One of them was in Guys and Dolls. <laughs> this was one of the first shows in the theater. Like, I think it was one of the first full shows, if I remember correctly, in the theater. And the girls didn't realize when they came into the dressing room that they, if they touched the light, they turned the light on, they could sometimes turn off the speaker in the room. So one of the girls came in and they turned the light on and they turned off the monitor in the room. And so we were all just yapping and all the girls were chit chatting and being like chickens, like we always are. And all of a sudden I went, <gasps> what's happening right now? And I ran out there and I think they took like, They'd been talking for 10 or 15 seconds without me. And I entered from the wrong side of the stage and <laughs> just blew on onto the stage like I knew what I was doing and went on from there. So that's one of my memories from Ashland. <laughs> um, and a couple of years after that, uh, I moved to New York and I did Mamma Mia on Broadway for two years full time and then um, three years part time, if you will. Um, but that was my only show that I did on Broadway. And then I came back here. Uh, my husband and I own a music store, Brick House Music in River Falls, <laughs> Wisconsin. Um, and so uh, he was still here while I was in New York. So came back here and I've just been in the theater scene ever, ever since. Um, I have just completed last year at the Chan Hassan my fourth production of Mamma Mia. So that's the gift that keeps on giving. Um, but thank goodness it's not my only gift, but that's been a good one. Um, and so I'm just delighted to be able to be here tonight. Um, and especially right now when we all need to be entertained and we all need to be able to appreciate entertainment and we need to be able to show our appreciation of that entertainment, perhaps with some of our dollars that we might normally buy a coffee with. And um, that money can go to Ashland to be able to keep them good through the winter, um, through the months where we probably won't be seeing live performances inside. So we'll be seeing more of the virtual. So um, I'm hoping that everyone watching tonight will consider um, donating some of their coffee money um, to Ashland and in their next virtual benefit or in this one here, or just as a check that they can send in the mail. Um, and uh, maybe you'll see us all again at the next um, virtual benefit. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Barry Anderson and uh, Rob and I go far back as well. Um, I started doing shows with Rob when I was in high school in, in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, uh, children's theater productions. And then uh, we did some shows together while I was in college. And then that um, kind of transitioned me to doing the very first Ashland production production uh, ever, which was a Cole Porter review called Cole uh, while I was still in college. And uh, it was before the shows were in Maplewood. And so we did the show at a restaurant um, with, which had an event space as well. And so um, it was very fun. I have such fun memories of that, um, 
that production and and it was the first time Ashland was was going ahead and, and doing something and uh, it was just really fun to be a part of that and um, and then I went to do I think two other shows Grand Night for Singing and uh, All Night Strut with Jen um, later on and uh, shortly after that I graduated college and um, did a bunch of regional theater and moved to New York um, and was able to do uh, two shows here um, on Broadway, Legally Blonde and Jersey Boys, and um, ended up taking both of those shows on tour. Um, I actually played St. Paul um, with Legally Blonde, and I played the Orpheum in Minneapolis with uh, Jersey Boys in, I think, 2015. So um, I spent six years uh, on the road with that show. So that was a huge chapter of my life. Um, and now I'm back in New York and finding ways to do theater and connect with people and make art in this crazy time. So I'm really glad to be here reuniting with um, dear longtime friends and um, I'm really excited to see what everyone has created for this awesome event. Go Ashland! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm Paris Rimmelard. Uh Hello. Um, I started with Ashland. I met Rob because he was choreographing a production of Narnia at Youth Performance Company where I was playing Mr. Beaver, um, which was all kinds of fun. And then I, didn't I stage manage All Night Strut? Is that what, what it was? Yeah. Um, yeah, somehow Rob roped me into stage managing, which I don't really do. Um, but uh, that's how I met Jen and Barry and Tim and who else was in that? Peg. Um, Peg. Oh, oh yeah, Peg. Um, so uh, after that, I um, Rob cast me as Sky Masterson in Guys and Dolls, having never heard me sing in anything other than a beaver voice <laughs> during Narnia, and so. The story he always tells is how we showed up for the first day for a sing through and he was just crossing his fingers that I actually knew how to sing. And I kind of was as well because I hadn't really done anything but, but children's theater at that point. But it turned out fine. Uh, and then I went on to uh, play Joseph in Joseph the next year. Um, and then not long after that, I guess a couple of years after that, I moved to New York um, and eventually did Hair, the American Tribal Love Rock musical on Broadway. Um, started, it was like a five year, that was another huge chapter of my life, uh, five years. Um, we started in Central Park, thinking it was a three day concert. It turned into a full run in Central Park, transferred to Broadway, went on tour, went to London, back to Broadway, back to tour. Total of five years of my life. Most amazing five years of my life. Um, until I met this one. Honorary Ashland member. Yes, hello. Um, I'm Jasenia Jala, and um, I'm an honorary Ashland member now. Um, <laughs> thank you for having me. Um, I actually grew up in Gastonia, North Carolina, um, and it's a little town right outside of Charlotte. And um, I'm primarily a dancer. I grew up dancing ballet all my life, and um, I went to school. Uh, for biology at first, um, but then I caught the acting bug and I auditioned for the acting program there. And so I got in and that was like my first taste in theater, um, besides act, uh, ballet and everything, because I grew up in a theater dancing uh, big ballets like the Nutcracker and Don Quixote and, you know, Sleeping Beauty and stuff. Um, but anyway, so I got into theater, I got into musical theater. I Afterwards, I moved to New York and um, yeah, ever since then, I've done many iterations of West Side Story. Um, that was my first big job out of college. I did the uh, national tour um, of the last Broadway revival um, in 2009. Um, and then I went out to the international tour. Um, and then after that, what did I do? Trip of Love, oh, Radio City. Yeah, Radio City. so I, I did a few like off-Broadway shows in New York and then my first Broadway show was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I was an Oompa Loompa. 
<laughs> um, and then I did Carousel, and um, now I am playing Anita in West Side Story, the Broadway revival of 2020, um, which is very, very exciting. Um, yay! <laughs> and uh, I also did um, West Side Story, the movie with Steven Spielberg. Um, and I play, I play a shark girl in that, but it was so much fun. And we will be hopefully seeing that next year in December. So yeah, that's about it. But I'm glad to be here and thank you. I'm very excited. Thank you. 
was the one who had it all. I was the master of my fate. I never needed anybody in my life. I learned the truth too late. I'll never shake away the pain. I close my eyes, but she's still there. I let her steal into my melancholy heart. It's more than he can bear. Now I know she'll never leave me, even as she runs away. She will still torment me, calm me, hurt me, move me. Myself, she'll walk right in and be with me forevermore. I rage against the trials of love, I curse the fading of the light. Though she's already flown so far beyond my reach, she's never out of sight. Even as she fades from view, she will still inspire me, be a part of everything I do. Wasting in this lonely tower, waiting by an open door, I'll fool myself, she'll walk right in. And as the long cold nights begin, I'll think of all that might have been Waiting here Okay, so the first video was Team Miscast, Ro and Nate. Super cute. Love them so much. Um, one of my favorite parts of the whole thing was the dog cameo. <laughs> the dog barking in the background, perfectly timed. Mm -hmm. But honestly, it added like this sweet touch of realism to the scene and it made it feel like really natural. Um, her voice is beautiful. They sound beautiful together, that last little harmony uh at the end was so sweet yeah i loved it yeah i think uh speaking about the the realism and everything um it felt like they were just like naturally talking to each other even though it was through song and um it felt very real and like it was just a conversation them coming home and um which i think is is great and that's what you look for in something like that so i still have a hard time doing that so and the chemistry was beautiful <laughs> um Ro and Nate um it was so fun to see this song kind of staged in a, a modern sort of setting I kudos to you on your blocking and um the use of your space uh it was very natural and it looked like we were watching two people having an actual conversation just happened to be singing it um I also really enjoyed the dog cameo <laughs> <laughs> um and um yeah, I, I thought it was um, just very fun to see it with a kind of a modern twist, see that song updated a little bit. So great job. Barry, didn't you do this show in college? I did actually do the show with Rob. Yeah, right? Perchick, oh, wow. Rob played model. Right? No? That's what I thought. I wrote that down. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Full circle, David Letterman. Um, so I wrote, I wrote a, a few very distinct things super sweet great voices mm -hmm. super natural like walking into a room just walking into a room 
about to perform, like you're going to sing a song and just walking into a room and singing it immediately is not that easy yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. So it was just kind of like, I am home, darling, I'm home. And I thought that was great. I really liked that. I loved the way that you staged it so that it was, it wasn't like it was staged at all. Um, and of course we all wrote down about the dog because who wouldn't, because that was the <laughs> cutest thing ever. And um, then I also wrote that uh, the physicality that the two of you had, like with the bump, bump, and, and it was, it was so much my parents. <laughs> I just had to giggle and I loved it. I thought it was really, really special. Um, all right, next we have team lights, camera, Ashland with Brittany and Bree. What the first thing I have written here is belt girls with three exclamation points. <laughs> Uh, both sound amazing, so powerful, so dramatic. Love it. Yeah, um, I actually did a bombshell in concert, and yeah. so um, listening to that song, it, it you know took me back to that time, and it was such a special time because it was actually my first time on a Broadway stage. Um, and listening to Catherine and Megan belt and like sing with such passion was so thrilling and I think that both girls were able to evoke that passion and like you could just like feel it and it was really great and like the way you both they both um really like cast themselves like perfectly like with the voices the you know the tone of their voices it was great so great job ladies all right and then uh Wait, what is this called? Wicked? Wicked good. Oh, wicked good. Wicked good. <laughs> um, Callista and Seth. Production value, amazing. Uh, <laughs> the sound production quality, the video production quality, the edits, the costumes, the makeup. It was just, that. what I have here is it was such a great translation from stage to video. Because that's something that, uh, especially right now, a lot of people need to think about is how to uh, translate you know, what we normally do on a proscenium with people sitting in an audience to watching it on these screens. And it's such a great job of that. It was so engaging the whole time. Their voices sound amazing. Everything was just, was great. Yeah, same. That's all I have to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll go next. Um, Brittany and Bree. Um, let Me Be Your Star is such a great goosebumps kind of number. I'm such a sucker for um, like female belty duets and uh, you guys picked a really good one. Uh, I think your voices blend so, so well. Um, so great song choice, great performance, great all around. Um, Callista and Seth, uh, wicked good. It was wicked good. That production <laughs> quality, hands down, is amazing. I, I felt like I was watching something on Netflix at first. It was really quite impressive. Um, and your voices are, are stunning, both of you. And um, another, the last thing I wrote down for it was that it was emotionally effective, even though you weren't in the same room. So great job. All right, so going into uh, Britain Breeze, ladies, come on. <laughs> making me feel bad about my 18 year old self <laughs> and my lack of belting ability <laughs> it was great it was great i was loving the straight tone to the vibrato i was loving the control that you both had um the the, the fact that i think you were controlling your sound from the stage itself so you know kudos to you for all of that um i also really enjoy the bare feet i have to tell you that <laughs> i sometimes like to perform in my bare feet makes me feel grounded. Um, so I was very impressed, super impressed, especially when you're able, when you're able to sing together uh, two females who are not competing for the stage, but are blending on the stage. And I was really enjoying that when you're actually singing together in the same note and when you were singing in harmony, I could hear you listening to each other, which is something that I very much appreciate because not everybody knows how to do that. So good, good on you and good on Ashland for helping you through that. Um, and then for Wicked Good, um, hey, Calista and Seth, I mean, I wrote great baritone and very emotive. So, okay, I wasn't familiar with this song and um, I think Rob said it was maybe from the movie. So that's case in point, um, but I got it. It was a story song and you guys did a really good job of creating a story in one tune, which I really like. 
Um, and you know, the Seth, the, your emotional quality in your baritone was just lovely, really lovely. I, I felt for you when I wasn't even looking at the screen. Um, so I, I appreciate that very much. And Calista, you have the sweetest, most innocent voice. Um, keep that and you'll be able to play young boys and young women for the next 15 years. And tell, I'll tell you, there are not that many people that can do that. So keep doing that. <laughs> it was just lovely. And the way you guys could work together with very different voice types and make it just blend. And, and uh, Calista, you were all over the place. You were up doing the soprano stuff and then you're singing down some of the low alto stuff. So I, I, first of all, I wrote great soprano voice and then I wrote great mezzo voice and then I wrote great alto voice and then I just said great voice. <laughs> so <laughs> um, kudos to you on that as well. Um, and of course the video quality was great and the sound quality was, was wonderful. Um, so I appreciate every aspect of your performance, of both performances. ever felt like nobody was there? Have you ever felt forgotten in the middle of nowhere? Have you ever felt like you could disappear? Like you could fall and no one would hear? Set speakers, you get more mileage 
from a cheap pair of sneakers. Next phase, new way, dance craze, anyways, still rock and roll to me. Don't you know that they're out of touch? Should've tried to be a straight gay student If you are, then you think too much Don't you know about the new fashion, honey? All you need are looks and a whole lot of money It's the next phase, new wave, dance craze anyway Still rock and roll to me Everybody's talking about the new sound funny, but it's still rock and roll to me. Women have been making bad choices since the beginning of time. Are you gonna be another one of mine? Ah. Used to think you were from outer space Who's that bright-eyed guy in your place? You're kind of cute <laughs> when you're not so shy ah. But I've been here before, have I come back for more? Another chapter in the history of wrong guys cast group um, singing Dear Evan Hansen, which, oh, my heart. Um, first of all, a, a great choice, a, um, a great choice for your age range. Um, and just, it's such a, um, 
a dear and, and heartfelt song to sing, um, even at my age, and I'm old. Um, but you have just a lovely, lovely voice, very uh, clear and flexible. And uh, I know there's probably a time limit on these things, but I would have loved to have heard more of you. So that's a good thing. Um, and then next we had um, Daniel um, from the Lights Camera Ashland group. Um, okay, with the attitude. I was totally digging it. It's like, this guy doesn't have any fear in the world. So that's pretty cool. It was really fun. Um, I love that you came in and just like told the story of Billy Joel's song and just said, this is, this is me doing it. And I'm going to take over this whole room and just make it, make it my own. I thought that was fantastic. Um, and I also, uh, way to sell the dance break, man. <laughs> like that's not dance breaks. I cut them. So, you know, <laughs> you have serious cojones there. Um, and the, you know, sax solo. I mean, you know, if you're, if you're gonna do air guitar, you should be able to do air sax, which is exactly what you did. So rock on. And oh, the wink at the end made me giggle. Um, and Courtney, Courtney Klein uh, with Wicked Good um, for the kinky song. Man, that's a great comic tune for you. Not only, not only is that song like a marathon that just goes on for, for almost ever, but it's, it encapsulates, again, it's one of those story songs that encapsulates an entire character. We found out who she was in the show in that song, which is pretty amazing to be, to be able to take that and put it onto a screen and have me be able to sit here and really enjoy that. That was super great. So you're super flexible. Um, your comic timing is fantastic. Uh, I love the way that you physicalized the number and just kind of, no, you know, balls to the wall, no holds barred, just let it be as weird and nerdy as she is and as in love and vulnerable as she is at the same time, which is, you know, that's a, that's a feat. And then um, also I had a, a theater professor in Eau Claire that um, would say to me, when you go out on that stage, you know, I can tell when you have no fear, when you go out there and you're just, you're a fearless actor, you'll do anything for the sake of the part, you'll do anything for the sake of the character. And I totally got that vibe from you. So great job. You go first. <laughs> All right, Team Miscast, Lydia. Um, what I have here is very engaging. One thing that I always struggle with still after performing for 800 years um, is stillness. And I was so engaged the whole time that you were singing and you didn't have to do anything to, uh, to suck me into the song and to suck me into what you were feeling. I actually got a little, I actually wrote this down, I got a little teary eyed because it was so sweet and I, and I was so engaged in what you were, what you were and it's a great song, but I was, you were so engaging uh, performing it. It was just really, really sweet, it was really great. Yeah, it was, um, it's a very tender song and your voice was so pure and um, you definitely, I could feel the emotion coming from it. Um, and I think I, again, I agree with you. I think simplicity um, is something that is hard to do and that people don't tend to do because, um, because it's so difficult. Um, you feel like you, you always feel like you need to be you, doing something. Yes. And but sometimes you just don't need to do anything and it's that much more powerful. Powerful, yeah. yeah it really worked, so yeah, great job. Great. Um, and then Daniel, Lights, Camera, Ashland. Great song choice. We, we just drove like two days to get down. We're at Justinia's brother's house right now. Um, and that song came on the radio yesterday and you just, you have to jam out to it. It's just one of those songs that is so good. And the other thing I have is that, that dance break, just like Jen <laughs> said, that was, that sold the whole thing. The dance break, the sax solo, that was, for me, that was the whole thing. So I'm dying for this show to be revived just because I'm a dancer and I am obsessed with it and I want to dance it. So you sing it, I'll dance it, let's take it up Broadway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but I also, I think it's what's hard is um, jukebox musicals, um, bringing a pop song onto the stage and especially with moving out, like the way it's set up, it's like, it's a band and he's singing and then like the dancers are the ones kind of telling the story. But the great thing that you did with this video is that you, you 
saying and you 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 know gave us uh you still acted and you gave us the story even though like technically the way it's done usually is it's just like a band rocking out so thank you for like you know he letting us hear what the words are and stuff so great job all right and then courtney and wicked good so this was i mean the last thing i wrote here is i believed every second of it um i follow on everything that jen said about this but uh, I, I know Annalie's a friend of mine. I did hair with her. For, she replaced Jeannie in hair. And she's one of those people who, she's a comedic genius. And she's so specific. And so a lot of those people, when you try to follow them, or when you try to do a song that, that they've done and they've become so known for, it's hard to follow something like that. But you were able to totally give it your own take while also telling the story that needs to be told and staying true to, yeah, staying true to what it needs to be for the show. Um, the quirkiness, the acting, it was so conversational and natural. It was just, all of it was, was so solid. So, so good. Yeah. You're a star. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also, um, I agree with everything you said. And just one thing to add on to that is that, um, keeping a dialect throughout a song <laughs> is so hard. And so great job with like carrying through, you know, the whole way through. So it was wonderful. So good. Cool. Um, first up, Lydia, Team Miscast. Um, I'm going to kind of piggyback on what everyone's been saying about your song. What I wrote down was that I leaned in when you started singing because uh, there is such a challenge when it comes to just being still and uh, not doing a lot when we're singing a song, especially in musical theater when we're the impetus is to dance and move and, and sell it to the back row. Um, but you just did a beautiful job and it was so effective, especially for that song. So really good job. The other thing I wrote down was diction exclamation point. I could hear and understand every single word without having to struggle. So that was great. Um, Daniel, lights, camera, Ashland. That song took me back. I wanted to get my roller skates out and just give <laughs> live all the 80s realness things. Um, I appreciated the vibe you were bringing to the song, the jean jacket, the whole package was so on point with the tune. Um, and I also noticed that the song fits perfectly in your vo vocal range, um, which is sort of a struggle sometimes for people to kind of deal with and find, but I thought it was a perfect choice for your voice. So good job. Um, Courtney, wicked good. Um, History of Wrong Guys is such a uh, epic tune to take on, kind of like Jen was saying. And um, I've seen the show a lot. My, my partner, Rusty, actually was the associate choreographer, associate choreographer for Kinky Boots. So I've seen a lot of Laurens do the, the number. And what's so fun about the song is that it's always individualized and you completely just totally kept up with that. Um, the quirkiness you brought to the song was so fun um, and you leaned into it and I was engaged the whole time. And I also wrote down great outfit, colors and hair. It was just so right for the, the tune. Very engaging, nice job. Hey there, um, this is my testimonial. My name is Meg Gruno. Um, I just wanted to say that Ashland is my theater home. Ashland welcomed me with open arms as a young performer 17, over 17 years ago. Um, since then, my life has taken me in a hundred different directions, um, but Ashland's always been there for me to come back to, and what a place to come back to. Um, I've met lifelong friends, made irreplaceable connections through Ashland. I've worked with kids and watched them grow into confident, creative adults over the years. Ashlyn's idea that everyone is weird and everyone is wonderful has really helped open my mind to accept and love and want the best for all different kinds of people. Every time I'm with Ashlyn people, I'm shown clear, specific reminders of the Ashlyn mission to work across generations and across our differences to make art together. It's no exaggeration for me to say that Ashlyn has made me a better person. Just last month, um, prepping for this event, I witnessed an older adult who's a new performer himself, but he specifically reached out to a student performer 
who seemed like he needed kind of a boost of confidence and a sense of belonging. These constant gentle reminders to joyfully be a better human being are why I keep coming back to Ashland and why I need to keep Ashland in my creative life. I love the bright light Ashland has been in so many lives, uh, mine included, and I can't wait to see what Ashland does in the future. My, my, at Waterloo, Napoleon did surrender. Oh, yeah, and I have met my destiny in quite a similar way. The history books on the shelf is always repeating itself. Waterloo, I was defeated, you won the war. Waterloo, promise to love you forevermore. Waterloo, couldn't escape if I wanted to. Waterloo, knowing my fate is to be with you. Whoa, 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 Waterloo, finally facing my Waterloo. My night. I tried to hold you back, but you were stronger. Oh yeah, and now it seems my only chance is giving up the fight. And how could I ever refuse? I feel like I win when I lose. Waterloo, I was defeated, you won the war. Waterloo, promise to love you forevermore. Waterloo, couldn't escape if I wanted to. Waterloo, knowing my fate is to be with you. Whoa, 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 Waterloo, finally facing my Waterloo. So how could I ever refuse? I feel like I win when I lose. Waterloo, I was defeated, you won the war. Waterloo, promise to love you forevermore. Waterloo, couldn't escape if I wanted to. Waterloo, knowing my fate is to be with you. Waterloo, finally facing my Waterloo. Hi, my name is Audrea and I've been at Ashland for four years. I have done eight plays at Ashland to be exact. And the thing I love most about Ashland is summer camps. You get to meet new friends and sing and dance. It's so much fun. Ashland is like a family to me. That's why I love it the most. Five hundred twenty-five thousand six hundred minutes. Five hundred twenty-five thousand days without cheer. Five hundred twenty-five thousand six hundred minutes. How do you measure? Ashland this year In pivots, fundraising In people, in virtual theaters Persistence while thinking outside the box In 525,600 minutes How do you measure Ashland in our lives? How about
Marianne, here we are again, waiting to see our kids perform. Oh my God, again, yet again. Yet again. Every one of these shows is so high quality. Friends, neighbors, they all talk about how it's professional. Absolutely. And they all have so much fun, and it's such a good experience. Hi, I'm Marianne Ringsdor, and I'm here with my friend Sheila Marie. And we are here to tell you um, what Ashlyn has done for us, for our kids, and how we think it's the best thing for the community. Sheila Marie, you want to start? Ashland has been fabulous for confidence for my daughter. It has helped her believe in what she can do. It's helped her fight for things she probably wasn't good enough to get, but still try and get them. It's really an interesting community, and it gave her friendships with generational people, people who are grandparents, people who are her own age, people who are in their 40s. She wouldn't normally have that opportunity. And it was really fantastic for her. And but I basically um, moved here from Zurich, Switzerland. I did not know a soul. I was trying to find a theater camp for my daughter because um, she didn't know a soul either. And it just so happens I was at Kohl's online. This woman told me about Ashlyn. And we found a home. And it not only gave her friends and the confidence to start in a new country, but she found the love and caring that we needed to, to right. do everything. I mean, it was great. And Ashland is very much a network and a community. Everyone is welcome to join, but once you're in, you're in. And the best thing too what? is I was able to work backstage, to usher, yep. to do tickets. So it gave me something to do and I got to meet people and all my friends. Like me. Like, exactly. <laughs> I've got this girl forever now. And I've got you. Exactly. <laughs> um, I was sitting in the green room on the sofa and she came barreling in with some long winter jacket, her arms full of stuff, talking a mile and a minute and just dumping stuff everywhere. <laughs> and you know what the thing is too, is because I'm from New Jersey, it takes people a while like to digest me. But then right, after exactly. that, it's yeah. cool. But that is exactly how I met you. Yeah. They call us Thelma and Louise. Hello. Only I'm Louise. <laughs> <laughs> Stage, we have a little office with our cheater reader glasses, and we have to go over everything again and again because we're old. We're old, and we don't remember all that much. Why should the kids have all the fun? Why should we drive them and not get to do something ourselves? Exactly. So what did we do? We did Jesus Christ Superstar, Pippin. Adam's Family, Newsies, and whatever is next, whenever it's next. Exactly. So Maybe Mamma Mia after COVID. What's wonderful about being in a production at Ashland is you get to interact with people you'd never be around socially. 25-year-olds, teenagers, little kids, 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds, people you don't normally interact with socially, at least I don't, to the point that I'm snort giggling in the wings because something happened before we're supposed to go on and we're all just laughing. Those are great memories. And the best part is, I thought I could never ever be on stage in front of people. Last time, it was 34 years ago when I was in a high school production of West Side Story and CT talked us into auditioning and it's been almost like once you do it, just you, do it. you get the fever and you can't stop and the people you get to know, it's incredible. To our next audition, cheers! cheers.
Team Miscast, Steve, Thomas, William, and Colin. How much fun was this one? Um, Waterloo. I wrote down concept exclamation point. It was very trippy and fun and completely on brand with all things Abba and Mamma Mia. It was so much fun. Um, and you all committed fully, which I really, really enjoyed. Costumes, great hair, great props. Amazing. <laughs> um, Zoe, Chris, and Elizabeth, our next song, Seasons of Love. I really just thought it was so heartfelt and I kind of got a little like emotional watching it because I love the song, but then the, the spin that you all put on it, it was so perfect. Um, and vocally too, I, I, I wrote down riffs and soulful, like it was really awesome to hear you guys sing. Um, and it was just so feel good. And I wrote, we need this now. We yeah. need to remember the love. So thank you so much for this song. Uh, third one, Wicked Good. Um, I love a Billy Joel mashup. It's so much fun. Um, those two songs are great. And I really enjoyed the black and white concept that uh, you had with the video. So great job. Okay, so Steve, Thomas, William, Cullen, and who is the puppy? Because the puppy was very <laughs> cute. <laughs> so Waterloo, I've never heard that song before. Um, so maybe I was doing choreography while I was sitting here doing, <laughs> listening to you, but oh my gosh, the outfits. I just put OMG, the hair is great. <laughs> it was so great. And then um, also, did you, where did you get the skeletons? Like, how does that happen? <laughs> um, and I think there were animal skeletons in there. So that was interesting. I, lo I, I was wondering what happened to your cute little dog when I saw a dog skeleton in there, but I figured it was all in fun. And um, this was a little bit like a Sergeant Peppers mm -hmm. video mashed up with a monkey's video. So I was definitely enjoying that. But I think almost above everything else, I love the age ranges. I love that we had like family on top of family on top of family. And then of course the dog. So great job. Um, very entertaining. And then Zoe, Chris and Elizabeth for Seasons of Love. Nice rewriting. You guys should like look and see if you can get a job writing for an industrial company that's doing all virtual <laughs> meetings and 
conventions right now. You did a really good job with your lyric rewrites. Nice job. I like the costume changes. I like the location changes. The voices were beautiful, all individually really cool and different. And it's amazing what you can do on a stage when you're repeating a chorus numerous times with a few stools. Because you made me interested in each chorus because you said something different each time with a different stool, a different outfit. So great job, way to keep us interested. And then Ella, Stephanie, Claire, and Anna for Wicked Good. Um, you all have such interesting, great, different personalities. I loved that. It was like each one of you had such a different style that you brought to the piece and the, uh, the way that it was um, set up with um, the Billy Joel in my life um, at the end. Uh, was super smart because when you have this beautiful ballad and you're we're, we're all like swooning back here to this beautiful ballad and then you end it with like a, a crushing like bouncy tune super smart mashup um but the song has such a great message of love your first so the first song and it's it's interesting um listening to that and enjoying it and then going into the COVID life, because as I'm seeing you all four separately in your separate locations, and I'm like, I don't care what you say anymore. This is my life. Go ahead with your own life. Leave me. Oh, they just did. They left you alone. So um, funny underneath all of that. And it, it does mean something completely different right now. So good job with your choices. And who can't, who doesn't love a good Billy Joel tune? And we got lucky enough to get two of them. Yeah. All right, Team Miscast, Steve, Thomas, William, Cullen. I have, oh my God, so much fun, with exclamation points. <laughs> and again, we get another dog cameo. I'm a sucker for dog cameo. I, I'll admit it. Who is it? And, and though, with that dog cameo, we get that edit to the skeleton dog. Don't understand the skeleton dog. Don't understand the, the skeletons. skeletons. <laughs> but I love them. <laughs> you just, you can't beat the enthusiasm and the commitment and the craziness, it was just so much fun, like top to bottom. Yeah, and to add to that, like I love that um, the editing made it feel like a music video and it did feel very much like Sgt. Pepper and all that stuff. And so it just, it added another layer of quirkiness and, and fun and um, I was really having a great time. <laughs> yeah, we were, just, we were just yeah. sitting here laughing and jamming along the whole yeah. time. Uh, Lights, camera, Ashlyn, Zoe, Chris, and Elizabeth. Uh, I love the beginning, the split screen edit, where you get all of you in different locations. Then we get other locations with the stage. I love the uh, uh, Bob Dylan slash in excess, like the cue cards doing the lyrics and the creativeness uh, uh, in changing all the lyrics to use it for this particular fundraiser. I have here, using your powers for good. That's what I have written down here. Um, all of your voices are amazing. Actually, we did a, there was some fundraiser, did you, you guys, Barry and Jen, you may have done this for Ashland about, I don't know, 25 years ago, um, where we sang Seasons of Love, um, and I sang that little, oops, I sang that little solo, and it wasn't nearly as good as you did it, so I'm a little angry, <laughs> but I'm very happy for you. Because <laughs> it was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I agree with everything. Um, the harmonies were beautiful. The voices really like blended well together. Um, and above everything, like the creativity within this group was just so great, you know, to hear different lyrics because everybody knows all of the lyrics of Seasons of Love. And so it was um, just a neat way to, you know, spin it around. Um, and yeah, it just brought a smile to my face. So great job. All right, moving on to Wicked Good, Ella, Claire, Stephanie, and Anna. Like everybody else said, you just, you can't go wrong with Billy Joel. Like just such great song choices. We just have to jam along. And, and taking, uh, uh, following what, what Jen was saying, um, especially right now, uh, something that we don't do as often is, is use this format to be able to perform together when we're not all in the same place. And we have to right now, but the way that you used it uh, was so fitting with right now, but also so effective um, with these songs. It was great. Yeah, um, I know that you guys have this like COVID spin on on the lyrics and everything of the last song, but I kind of got a sense of like this like female power, which I think is is really fun because you always hear 
a man sing that song. Um, so I thought that that was really cool. You know, this is my life, you know, and I'm going to do what I want, you know? So I think that was really cool. That's what I took from it. Um, and I love that in a group song that every single person was given a moment to shine. Um, and it's just, it's, it was special. So great job. Let me catch my breath. This is really hard. If I start to look like I'm sweating, up, that's cause I am. I'm not good with words, but that's nothing new. I've never been a man who lived an office life I've never been a man behind a desk I've always been a man who said that Staying still is playing dead The kind who's looking forward to the challenges ahead People say that's irresponsible People tell me stay at home but I'm not made for things like mowing lawns or apron strings. I'm my best 
when not at rest. So I fight the dragons and I storm the castles and I win a battle or two. But then a feeling comes like 50,000 drums all bang and bring my stories home to you. And I wonder as I wander down the road from door to door Exactly what you think of where I've been Do you know I joined the circus, met a mermaid, fought a war Do you know I think of you through thick and thin Because even though I'm making deals and bringing people joy I'm usually only thinking of my boy Out there on the road I pray You'll come to me one day And say let's fight the dragons And then storm the castles And I'll do the best that I can But everybody knows that's how the story goes to turn each boy into a bigger man. So I'll fight the dragon till you Five, I fell in love. It didn't last. He ran from me, literally ran from me, and being Kenyan, he ran fast. When I was ten, in love again, this Peace Corps guy. I waited hours inside his tent with flowers, which made him laugh, which made me cry. By 13, I gave up trying. I decided I would be a mathematician. Cause math is real. I memorized a lot of pi because addition and subtraction and division would never make me feel so stupid with love. Like I didn't get it. I didn't get it somehow. Smart with math, but stupid with love. I didn't get it. me this cute boy <laughs> he's like someone from TV he's like that guy who gives out roses to those women his clothes is grooming and he's a foot away from me with swoopy hair and shiny eyes that I could swim in he's live and in the room and I'm stupid with love I want to get it I want to get it but how smart with math but stupid with love I want to get it I didn't get it till now 2 over 0 is undefined yes I'm astounded and I'm plussed I am filled with calculust does this guy work out? he must all sweaty at the gym could that image be more hot let me just enjoy that thought school was rough but now it's not cause now there's it's all so simple, stupid with love, but I can get it. Watch this girl self-educate. I learned math so I can learn love. You want to bet it? Then I can get it. Just wait. Just wait. 
Flexi, Team Miscast, Run Away With Me. Um, great job on this song. Uh, the first thing I had written down was your rhythmic sensibility is so spot on. Uh, this song has a lot of syncopation, a lot of offbeats happening, and you just never strayed from uh, the, the meter and the tempo and the beat. So kudos on that. And I also loved the emotional journey you took us on because you started at one place, you had a whole lot going on during the song, and then you ended at some place completely different. So that's really important in a song like that. Awesome job. Chris Lights, Camera Ashland, the song from Big Fish. It's such a great tune. And uh, I really thought the editing on your song was so good and it really um, helped tell the story. What I really loved most was your balance between singing to camera and then letting us kind of see your inner thoughts inside your head kind of working. Um, that was really effective. Um, and then I just wrote great high note on the best that I can. It sounded awesome. So great job. Katie, Wicked Good. Um, what a great song. I'm not familiar with this song, uh, but I feel like I am now after having watched you perform it. Um, I thought your use of the spaces in between the lyrics and how you acted and kept the action going was really great. Um, great use of, I guess, what some people call the air. You know, when you're not singing a word, we were still engaged watching you um, act. And then I thought your setup and the set and just the simplicity of, of you sitting at a desk as a math student totally worked and was super effective. Very engaging. Great. Yeah. All right, Lexi with the uh, team Miss Cast. Uh, I'll, I'll follow on, on what Barry was saying. Like, I love the stillness at the beginning again, and then the, the way that it builds throughout, both uh, uh, dramatically and then also vocally, the way that you took us on that journey and the way that you move through that and then take us back to, uh, you know, you go through sort of what I have here is like a sense of desperation building, stakes rising, moving from confidence into resolve and then back to that uncertainty uh, at the very end. It was, it was a really uh, a compelling and engaging journey that you took us on. And I also have here, way to nail that money note with an exclamation point. Great, that's really great. Yeah, um, I agree with everything you said. Um, all I have to add to it is, um, yeah, the, the use of your dynamics um, with starting just, well, emotionally, you know, and taking us through the arc of the, the song, but, but technically, you know, speak singing it and sort of just very conversational. And then it becomes, you know, this big like swell of, of, of singing, um, which was really beautiful and very effective. And then the last part as well as it was just like, you were just speaking to us and it, um, it really like hit, um, which was great. And that last big note, the control that you had from the big belt into like the small, like breathy note, it was, it was really great. So good job. All right, Chris, lights, camera, Ashland. Uh, the first thing I have here is, uh, can we come over? Where <laughs> yeah. are you filming this? Uh, we'll quarantine because... with you. <laughs> yeah, that looks amazing. <laughs> also, doggy cameo, 10 points. Are we giving points? We don't have points. <laughs> Still, you get 10 points anyway. Um, and following what Barry said, I, also, I love the, the blocking and the use of the camera to tell the story. Um, that is something, you know, in these times uh, to think about is, is we're doing these things for people to watch on screens. And so to, to be able to use that and make it that much more engaging is, is uh, really, uh, really great. Uh, and also I said, just solid singing and acting. It was just really great. Yeah, the voice is wonderful. Um, I think that it was kind of smart to use that song because, um, and to use the reference of, of quarantining and being you know stuck at home and like COVID and everything. So I thought that that was, um, like a neat touch. Um, and yeah, I mean, everything that you said is is spot on. I think that um, the way it was filmed felt like um, the uh, musicals that we all grew up watching on, you know, in movie musicals. Um, you know, again, what, uh, what he said was that you know, the, the um, going from thinking about it and us like seeing your inner thoughts, but then like talking to us, it was, it was really great. So good job. 
And then Katie, Team Wicked Good, very conversational, very comfortable. Uh, I was right there with you the whole, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> Restringing my notes here. Oh yeah, so what I have here is I, did, I realized I was just smiling through the whole song, which is great because it means that I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention anymore. I was just right there with you on the whole journey. Um, vocally was great, the acting was great. Um, yeah, it was just great, just so comfortable, um, really cute. Yeah, I felt like we were best friends and we were in class and you were like telling me about the cute boy. And it, I, I think that that was the best part of it. I mean, it's a great song and you fit the, the character very well. Um, I love Mean Girls. Um, and I have a lot of friends that are in the show. Um, but it was, it was just so nice because I felt like you were just talking to me and we were good girlfriends and you were telling me the gossip. And it was, I mean, that's exactly what you want for that kind of song. So good job. Okay, Lexi, miscast, run away with me from the mad ones, which I am not familiar with. So forgive me for that, because now I'm gonna have to look it up. Um, so I, of course, we are all smart performers. So we all agree that you did a great job. Um, we just say it slightly differently. So um, a really good internalizing of the song. Um, we can all act and we can all show, well, those of us here on the screen, can all act and can show feelings um, on the outside. But I felt like I was seeing you from the inside, which is a little different. Um, so that's super cool. And again, from, um, from taking the quietness and kind of the stilted conversation that she has, which is so much harder to do, like Barry said, with all of the different rhythms and the stops and the starts and the syncopation. Um, it's so much more difficult to do than people think and that they know until they try to do it. Um, it's like Sontag. And, um, and then to the serious energy that you bring to it, like she gets to a point where she's like, I have, you, you gotta listen to me right now. This is totally great. You have to do it. Like you gotta come with me right now. And it's just like this real strong energy. And then you give your, what I circle with the money note, Paris took my, term um, um but you're taking the, the energy from that high belt and then translating it down into that vulnerable spot that you were just in so it's it's it was everything from the journey like barry said and taking the the your technique um and and also giving us the the full picture um the full experience of that song and one that I'd never heard of before. So I could have been like, oh, I don't know this song. What is this song? And you know, but I wasn't, I was like, oh, okay. I'm just gonna enjoy this movie. Um, so good job. And then Chris with Fight the Dragons. Dude, again, a song that I'm not familiar with, which is poo poo on me because it's from Big Fish, which I should know, but I do not. Um, the first thing I wrote was too bad that your location sucked. <laughs> <laughs> so. I mean, if only they could have given you a nice place to shoot. Um, you know, it was great. Lighting. <laughs> yeah. We're all up here, like, you know, where it's 45 degrees and, you know, cold. But um, obviously, uh, from what everybody said, too, it was, a, it was a really good choice for you. I really enjoyed what I was hearing, which, which was what my, my teacher from Eau Claire, Beverly Dick, which she would call um, speaking where you're, where you're singing and singing where you're speaking. And I felt you like you did that very well. You could speak right here and then you could sing right there in the same breath. Um, and that's, again, that's a, that's a talent that not everyone knows how to utilize. And it was just effortless. And then your beautiful higher notes too were just, were just gorgeous. And again, effortless sounding, but we all know, don't we, that that's not effortless. That's, that takes a lot of time to be able to build that talent up. So great job, um, brava. And then uh, Katie with Wicked Good, totally believed it, that you were my new best friend, just like she said, <laughs> that you were my new best friend and like you were totally telling me your life story. Like we were just sitting and you were there at your table and we were just whispering and you were telling me your life story about all these dudes that you had dated. It was super, I totally believed it. It was. You sold everything to me from the very first second that you got onto the screen, which I loved. Um, and even though this is a very, it's a very rangy, there's a lot of intervals in there that are, a lot of <laughs> intervals in there that are not easy. It's not easy, it's not an easy song to sing. It's, you're jumping all over the place. 
but it, you made it just sound like it was a conversation and that's so great job. Um, and then I also said, even working with a track that has breaks in it, that you have to time and then come right back in with the music when, I mean, come on, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't notice anything. It was like you had recorded that in the studio with the orchestra and you had a conductor. So good job for you. You killed it. Can I just, can I just add something that all three of them did in this group? And a lot of people have too, but uh, translating all of these songs to this medium, because there, mm -hmm. there are dynamics that may not necessarily read on stage that all of you used on camera um, with it being intimate, with it being conversational, with, with it being close, that you know may not read in a 2000 seat theater in the back row. And so your ability to adapt to this medium and this, this time right now of, of uh, translating these performances to you know, cameras and computer screens is, was really, really impressive.
or resign bringing something we must learn and we are led to those that help us most to grow if we let them and we help them in return well i don't know if i believe that's true but i know today because I knew you like, like a comet pulled from orbit as it passes the sun like a stream that meets a boulder halfway through the wood who can say if I've been changed for the better but because I knew you
Team Miscast, Julie and Grace, I really enjoyed this choice of a song. Uh, rarely have I heard it sung by two women. Um, so I enjoyed that. Uh, what I also found interesting that was that one of you was foreground and the other was further back. And so we ha sort of had this like um, quieter sort of shadowy version almost with the, the one that was more forefront. And I kind of thought that played into the storytelling a little bit. And it made me wonder if one of you was Lily, who was Lily? So it just made me very engaged. Great job. I also wrote down gorgeous song and good pitch from both of you. So thank you for that. Uh, Lights, camera, Ashland, Anna and Rachel. So you guys threw me for quite the loop. Um, for <laughs> good was gorgeous. And uh, I was like, oh, matching sweatshirts even, and just playing into this like really good friend, uh, like best friend vibe. And it got me thinking about like how all of my good closest friends have come from my theater days. And like, um, so that's where I was going. And then you threw this wrench into it with sisters and it was such a surprise and it made me smile for the entire rest of your segment. So that was great. Um, well done. Uh, Wicked Good, Grace and Maximilian. Wow, what a way to end the night. Uh, such energy. I, can, can you please ship some of that to New York City so I can have a little bit? Um, <laughs> Max, Maximilian, your choreography throughout was just constant and so fun to watch. And um, it just, you both made me really get excited about Christmas. So thank you. All right, Miss Cast, Julie and Grace. I always love it when people switch up the sexes on songs. And I will agree with Barry that I have heard a lot of duets done by women that were originally sung by men, but I have never heard this one. And because it's a show that I also probably have only seen six times in my life, but I've heard it done live more often. It just put a whole different kind of backdrop behind the song that just really intrigued me, which I thought was super cool. Um, you have both have lovely voices and they're very different from each other, but it just, they just fit together so nicely. When, especially at the end, that song always gives me goosebumps at that final key change. Ah, I just, I got chicken skin. So well done. Um, and then Anna with um, Anna and Rachel, Lights, Camera, Ash Ashland, for good. You guys, it's just such a sweet, feel good tune and such a lovely, I wrote such a great friend song. There's so much love from one person to the other in, the, in that tune and it just always kind of hits me right in the heart space and a really nice warm and fuzzy tune for the two of you to sing together. But then when you came up with sisters, cause I saw at the beginning, I saw, you know, for good and then sisters. And I was like, does this mean they are sisters or, but then you actually sang sisters. And I loved again, how we have like you both singing, you know, like the movie, very different characters. They're very different personalities. Um, even though they are, you know, singing this song about sisters, they're very different personalities. And you captured that super well too, which I really, really liked. And I like the nice diversion from the really sweet, cuddly song to like that very sassy personality song that uh, just gave us all the moves that we wanted at the end of that medley. And then Grace and Max from Wicked Good. I loved your costumes. <laughs> I, I, I love the costumes, I love the snow. Um, I wrote adorable and great energy. And then I said, you know, Grace had to do a lot more singing, but Max had super moves, man. <laughs> it was total, you were just like breaking down. And I was like, wow. And then, and then the cartwheel, Grace did a cartwheel. And so I couldn't, we can't not say anything about that. Um, and then at the end, way to, way to bring it all to the, to the very end, way to fill that dance break. You guys were, you must have been super sweaty. I hope you only had to do it once because <laughs> there was a lot of snow. There was a lot of floor work and yeah, very much appreciated. Great job. All right, uh, Miss Cast, Julian Grace. This song is so beautiful. I've always wanted to sing this song. I've never been able to. Barry, I'm gonna Zoom you after this. We're gonna work something up. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, it's just such a, a beautiful song choice. Your voices are beautiful, and it, like like both Jen and Barry said, it's it's uh, it's always interesting to take a song that's usually sung by uh, one uh, gender and and transfer it to another. Um, and uh, I, yeah, I really can't add to what they both said. It was it was just interesting and and unique, and the way that you played off of each other just worked really well. Yeah, um, and. <laughs> also another great uh version of, of simplicity of just you know coming in standing there and and setting yourself up in a way that makes us all lean in and and enjoy the song and listen to your beautiful voices and um go on the journey with you so great job and then anna and rachel lights camera ashland love the mashup i would have never thought to put those two songs together but <laughs> They work, and that's like like Jen was saying. Like, I love the uh, earnestness of um, the wicked. What's the song called for? For good. For good. Yeah, the earnestness of that song, and then just like the total sass with uh, sisters it was so much fun to to see that. And then bonus points for the Ashland sister sweatshirts. Mm -hmm. You're kind of pandering to the judges here, but it worked. <laughs> I feel like you this were looking great. at my notes because I have the same you know? thing <laughs> copying over here. <laughs> I don't have much to add, but I will just reiterate that um, I love the first song. As soon as that song starts to play, it gives me chills. And you ladies like really brought that around. And, and um, it was so earnest and tender and such a feel good song. And then you switched it up on us and like the cheekiness and sassiness was so fun to just see how you're both able to um, create those different characters and uh, do it all in, in one. Yeah, and we were band. all like, oh, okay. <laughs> This is where we're going yeah, with this. All right. So great job. Yeah. And then uh, Grace and Maximilian for Wicked Good. This was just so much fun. That's uh, what I have here is it, it just looks like you're having so much fun on stage. And when you're having fun on stage, 99% of the time, the audience is having fun too. And you're just so committed to it. Um, just, and I love that just you were, you were just went, totally went for it. Uh, it, was, it was great. So much fun. Yeah, you let go and the commitment was full on. Um, and as much as I don't think I'm ready for snow, you made me want to <laughs> to have snow and go and play out in the snow with you guys and, you know, wear all the Christmas garb and stuff. So, it, um, yeah, and also the dance moves were, hey, that was really great. Um, the physicality was just so much fun. And then, Grace, your, um, your singing voice is just, it was it was spot on. It, it, it brought, you know, such big smiles and warmth and, and laughter to us. So great job. Okay, so we were told that we had to um, pick a favorite and I'm having a really hard time with any sort of favoritism here. But I did go through each group and I went through all of my notes. And I have I have seen a pattern um, that would lead me to saying if I had a hundred dollars that I was going to donate for one group, I would end up putting that hundred dollars into dun 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 <laughs> group three. Uh, but that being said, if I had a hundred dollars, I would probably put a decent amount of group three in group two and in group one because they were all so great. Like each one of them, I was like, oh, but they oh. All of them were fantastic. And there were so many different choices for each group. Like there were so many different performances that it was, it's, it was really hard for me to choose. Um, so I kind of just did that and, and worked it out. But um, again, if I had a hundred dollars that I could put down, I think it would probably be 33, 33, 33, just laying out there. All right. Well, this, how do we even begin to, to kind of pick one that stands out you all all the groups just did amazing and um so um i guess going just with my gut something that stuck out stuck out to me was the diversity uh of wicked good so i really appreciated like some of the simplicity of uh like katie's mean girls song um contrasted with the you know editing capabilities of Callista and Seth's duet at the beginning. Um, I really enjoyed that. But honestly, everybody, 
you're all my favorite. You all just went over and above anything that I was expecting. So thanks so much for letting me be a part of this. Great job, everybody. Yes, yeah, it's so hard to choose because <laughs> it, it really, there's such a range of ages, there's such a range of types, there's such a range of different types of songs and performances. It's everything was so good. Yeah, I mean, following what Barry said, thanks for, thanks for just uh, inviting us to watch these things. It's been so much fun just, just getting, as, a, as an audience member, getting to watch this. So it's so hard to pick something. But that being said, Rob is forcing us to do this. So <laughs> I am also going with Team Wicked Good. There was just the, like Calista and Seth, the production value, the editing of that Beauty and the Beast piece. Uh, Courtney with the uh, Kinky Boots song, so good. Katie with the uh, Mean Girl song. Uh, Maximilian and Grace with, I mean, that was just, I mean, how do you, how do you beat that, that kind of joy and enthusiasm? So I'm gonna say we did good. Okay, and I didn't let him copy my notes this time. <laughs> so um, I'm actually, I agree that everyone was so great and, you know, it's just so nice to, to um, you know, we haven't been doing this for a while and to, to sit down and like get a full show of so many different, you know, shows and stuff like that. It's just such a treat. So thank you all for, for putting yourselves out there. Um, uh, but I will say that my vote goes for Team Miscast. And I only say that you know, everybody does such a great job, but um, I think that this team, I, I'm just such a sucker to see, uh, you know, songs being done in a different way, either through gender roles or um, just something that you wouldn't necessarily sing because of your uh, typecast and stuff. So um, I think that that was really great. And I found myself um, really leaning in to listen to that and that was like a, you know across the board everybody I was always like ooh, what's happening here it was very interesting so thank you all all right thanks so much again everybody please be safe and keep making your art we all need it so keep singing keep acting see you soon Absolutely. Thank you so much for having us um, as your judges. Although nobody's getting judged tonight, we're all just enjoying all of the entertainment that we're getting. But thank you for having us. Thank you for letting us be a part of this. Thank you for uh, having Ashland be a part of your lives. Thank you for donating to Ashland, for keeping them in business. We want to make sure that we support all of our local performers and the theaters throughout this hard time, if we can. And that could be $5 or $10 or more. But thank you for taking your time and some of your dollars for that this evening. Yeah, thank you so much for giving us these performances. We've, we've all been missing theater so much, uh, watching it, doing it. Um, so, so watching all of you translate this to this, uh, this medium and to this time, uh, it's just so much fun and it's just, it's been such a joy. Um, and, and thank you to Ashland for not only putting this on and for uh, giving us this, but thanks for, for what you gave us 15, however many years ago when we were doing shows at Ashland, because I know for a fact that I would not have uh, learned the skills and had the confidence to uh, have the career that I've had if I hadn't, if, if I hadn't done the shows there and if, and if Rob hadn't had the confidence in me back then uh, to put me up on that stage. So uh, all, all of you guys uh, just follow his lead and uh, yeah. Uh, this is my first kind of peek into Ashland because I'm just an honorary judge and um uh i am blown away by the enthusiasm and the dedication that everyone um has and um everything that you put into these videos um it was such a treat and thank you so much um great job to everyone and stay safe everybody wave <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.